what's up everybody welcome back to mad medicine in this video we're going to be discussing anxiety disorders now, i know what you guys may be thinking i probably suffer from anxiety disorders and yeah yeah you might we all do but today we're going to be discussing three main disorders specifically for the usmle step one so just hang on tight if you guys don't know on our YouTube channel, we have a psychiatry playlist for the USMLE Step 1 where we're constantly updating our videos and posting new content so you guys can study for the Step 1. So go check that out. The link is right here. And uh, when you do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. With that being said, with that little tiny advertisement for the channel, let's begin and let's discuss anxiety. So anxiety is something that we all have and no doubtably uh you definitely have it, especially if you are studying for the step one. Uh, anxiety is a feeling of intense, excessive, and persistent worry and fear about everyday situations. And in this feeling, in this worry and this fear, you end up having a lot of physiologic manifestations. Remember, our emotions are very closely tied to our physiology and to our uh, a well physical well-being. And when you feel anxious, you're going to realize that your your heart starts beating really fast. You start breathing really fast. You start sweating and you get really tired. And that happens a lot uh, with people who suffer from anxiety disorders specifically. And that can be very detrimental to their health and to their mental and physical well-being. So they're going to suffer from tachycardia, tachypnea, diaphoresis, and they're also going to be fatigued. Now, these symptoms, like I said, can function, uh, sorry, can interfere with daily functioning, and they often do so, especially for patients who have really debilitating uh, anxiety levels where they can't do anything. It obviously interferes, and they're usually caused by stressful situations, i.e., USMLE step one. I'm sorry, guys, it really sucks. Get ready. You're going to have a roller coaster of emotions while you're studying for this step one. So, uh, your anxiety levels are going to be going up and down and up and down. But the main thing to understand about anxiety is that it is not, uh, not attributable to another mental illness or mental condition and or uh, substance abuse. That's very important. It is self limiting. Okay, it happens by itself. It's not caused by something else. That is very, very important to understand about anxiety. Now, prolonged exposure to anxiety, prolonged levels of anxiety are what leads to anxiety disorders. We all have some sort of anxiety, but we don't all have anxiety disorders. If you have an anxiety level that's high for a long period of time, you're going to end up developing an anxiety order. And that's what we're going to be discussing today in this video. So there are four main anxiety disorders that you need to know about for the USMLE step one. And the first one is going to be generalized anxiety disorder. The second one is called adjustment disorder. The third one is called social anxiety disorder. And the fourth one is called panic disorder. But I put three asterisks next to it because you are going to have a separate video for panic disorder by itself. So just stay tuned. We're not going to be discussing panic disorder in this video. We're going to be discussing mainly these three uh, uh, disorders in this video today. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's start our discussion about generalized anxiety disorder, also known as GAD. Generalized anxiety disorder is a type of uh, anxiety disorder where the anxiety itself is not proportional to the stressor that's causing it. Let's say they have a deadline for a paper that's due. Let's say a patient ha is in college, they have a paper due in a week, and they ha that's a deadline. Normally, people obviously get stressed out. They might, you know, work hard. But patients who have generalized anxiety disorder, not only are they going to get stressed out, they're going to feel anxious, that, and they're going to feel so anxious that they might start shutting down. They might not be able to complete the task that they have to do. That makes them uh, makes that anxiety not proportional to the amount of stress that they are under. That's very, very important to understand. And this anxiety itself is usually unrelated to a certain situation. It usually happens in general overall by itself. That's very important to understand. A lot of times patients who are suffering from GAD are going to complain that I feel anxious. I feel my chest tighten for no reason. There's really nothing going on in my life right now. I just feel anxious. And that is an example of generalized anxiety disorder. Now, as you know, 
when it comes to psychiatry, when it comes to psychiatry portion for step one, diagnosis and time frame are very, very important. So when it comes to GAD, this anxiety level must last more than six months. Very important. Commit this to memory, okay? Uh, let's write this down. High yield. The six months is important because anything less will give you a different type of anxiety disorder, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But this anxiety level, this generalized uh, anxiety in increase has to last greater than six months. Now, when it comes to symptoms, patients who suffer from GAD are going to feel restless. They're going to feel uh, irritable. They're going to have sleep disturbances. They're going to feel tired and have muscle tension and just generally are going to be uh, struggling to concentrate. Those are pretty much general symptoms. They're very nonspecific at the end of the day. Keep in mind, you know, I know we've all felt anxiety. We've all felt anxious at one point or another. Think back to how that felt and how uh, it kind of restricted you from being productive. And then just spread that out for six months and think about how it must feel to uh, ha be suffering from generalized anxiety disorder. That'll give you a good understanding of the symptomology of this disorder as well. Now, when it comes to treatment, it's pretty straightforward. Treatment for GAD are going to be SSRIs and SNRIs. That's the first line, okay? So antidepressants are the first line treatment along with cognitive behavioral therapy. If that does not work, if that does not work out, then you want to give benzodiazepines. Now, you got to be careful about benzodiazepines because of their abuse potential as well as their ability to put someone in a more you know, depressed state. Not like in they're going to be depressed, but their uh, physical being is going to be kind of slowed down because benzos are downers, right? So definitely watch out for the side effects for benzodiazepines. And that's pretty much all you need to know for generalized anxiety disorder for step one. So we're going to move on. We're going to talk about the next anxiety disorder, which is called adjustment disorder. Now, this, again, is a type of uh, anxiety disorder where patients have emotional symptoms that occur within three months. So they're going to feel anxiety. They're going to feel depression, but it's going to last within three months. Okay. Uh, and another thing to understand is that this occurs within three months of an identifiable physiosocial stressor. So something that you can definitely attribute this disorder to. So this could be something like divorce or a loss of a loved one that can definitely cause an adjustment disorder. Essentially, the way I like to think of it is uh, I think about the name adjustment disorder. They are having uh, difficulty adjusting to their new situation, whether they lost their spouse or their partner or they just, just went through a divorce. They are now adjusting to their new life, but they're having difficulty adjusting. A lot of times adjustment disorders might present along with uh, grief, uh, feelings of grief too, especially if they've lost someone. So keep that in mind. But the three month time frame is very important. If they feel anxiety, Within three months, that is uh, a, an, an adjustment disorder. Anything that ends up more is going to be other types of issues. Now, this anxiety itself is going to be related to a, the specific situation. Remember, in GAD, it was unrelated. So I'm going to write that down for you guys. So GAD, the anxiety was unrelated to anything. In adjustment disorder, it is related. It is connected to something that happened in their lives that changed their living situation. Now, the, if the uh, in this case, the anxiety and depression have to last for less than six months. So, if it's zero to six months, right, you're gonna have something called adjustment disorder. And let's just write this down for you guys to understand. If it's greater than six months you're going to have generalized anxiety disorder. That is the time frame that's very important to understand. And I've written that right here too. Now, the symptoms do not meet the criteria for uh, depression, major depressive disorder. You're not going to have five out of those nine uh, these things that we discussed about in the sad person skill. They're not going to have that, but they, what they will have is some sort of depression overall. They're going to feel down. They're going to feel upset about what's ha what happened to them. And the treatment for this is also pretty straightforward. It's going to be CBT and SSRIs. For most of these uh, adjustment disorders, antidepressants are the first line treatment 
right off the bat. So always remember that. SSRIs in psychiatry are like the, the miracle drug. So when all else fails, when you don't know what to put, go with an SSRI. More likely than not, you're going to have the right answer with the SSRI, just talking statistically. And that is all you need to know for adjustment disorder. Just keep in mind that it is a related uh, uh, anxiety disorder that occurs due to a certain event that happened in their lives, and it lasts less than six months. If it's a, if it's greater than six months, they're going through general anxiety disorder. And in this case, patients are not going to meet the criteria for MDD. That is adjustment disorder in a nutshell. And finally, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the last disorder, which is called social anxiety disorder disorder. Uh, it is also a type of anxiety disorder in which a person has anxiety due to a phobia. So a phobia is a persistent or excessive fear of an object or situation. It could be anything and we all have some sort of phobia. I have uh, some sort of phobia of uh, uh, spiders like Ron, Ronald Weasley. But um, in this case, social anxiety disorder, the anxiety and fear is going to end up lasting greater than or equal to six months with a very specific phobia. That's the key key distinction. So if it's less than or equal to six months, we have adjustment disorder, right? Let's just write this down. Adjustment disorder. If it's greater than six months, you have generalized anxiety disorder. If it's greater than or equal to six months, plus a phobia, all right, you're going to have social anxiety disorder. Now, this phobia specifically is going to be the fear of being in uh, uh, a very so, uh, crowded place. So agoraphobia is the phobia we're dealing with, okay? So if they have agoraphobia and it lasts greater than or equal to six months, let's just write this down, I forgot to write months, uh, then they're dealing with social anxiety disorder. In this disorder, patients are going to have an exaggerated fear of embarrassment in social situations like public speaking and even peeing in a public restroom. And I put this gift right here to show you guys, right? A lot of people with social anxiety disorder have this fear. They're going to go in public and there's going to be a lot of uh, open urinals and one person is going to stand right next to them even though there's so many open urinals. I mean, for every guy, that's kind of a fear. I don't know why you want to do that, but whatever. Anyways, that's pretty much social anxiety disorder in a nutshell. A lot of times... Uh, these patients can end up becoming uh, introverts. They end up stop leaving their house completely because of this phobia. It becomes so debilitating. The treatment for this, again, is going to be first-line uh, SSRIs, but you can also give something called venlafaxine. That is another drug you give. Keep in mind, SSRIs are still the mainstay of treatment. Uh, it's still the best drug you want to give. All right, SSRIs are the medications you want to put. All right, you can also give them beta blockers uh, and benzodiazepines for performance type disorder. But the main thing you want to understand is that this can cause other side effects. Markedly, the uh, beta blocker can cause decrease in contractility and benzos can cause de uh, de depressed state of mind as well as abuse potential for benzos are pretty high. So you want to be careful when, when uh, administering or when prescribing these drugs to treat social anxiety disorder. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video on anxiety disorders. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. It'll really help us out. And if you guys are interested, you can find our lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. So you can go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts and check out our uh, our USMLE Step 1 podcast where we talk about everything we've been talking about. Just search Mad Medicine and you'll find us there. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and go ahead and continue.